Over the last few years, the world has been facing some extreme challenges, things like the war in Ukraine and the pandemic. And amongst those headlines, it's easy to miss the more structural trends. Experts at Schroders believe that during this time, we've been transitioning to a new regime in market behaviour and policy. And they also believe that we've seen the end of the zero rate environment that's existed since the great financial crisis. In this next report, we'll look deeper into those trends and the implications for investors. The Bank of England announced today it will buy unlimited quantities of government bonds at a, quote, urgent pace. Last year, inflation reached its highest level in 40 years. And after years of support to cut rates and trillions of dollars of quantitative easing, central banks had to shift their focus from growth to lowering inflation, even if it means a recession could be on the way. Why have central banks had to shift their focus? Well, basically, we've seen a deterioration in the trade-off between growth and inflation. We're in a more stagflationary environment. And this has been driven by long-term structural trends, such as demographics, deglobalization, and decarbonisation. And what it means is that central banks don't have the luxury of keeping rates pinned down at zero any longer. A source alleges that two ships transported a large amount of ammunition in January from Iran to Russia. The giant Chinese balloon that had been floating across parts of the United States has been shot down by an American fighter jet. The US believes China is gearing up to offer military support to Russia. Growing geopolitical tensions, global price rises and supply chain issues are catalyzing a move to deglobalize. There are a number of factors which are driving a shift against globalisation. Firstly, the pandemic exposed the vulnerability of global supply chains and as a consequence there's been a drive to simplify those supply chains to make them more resilient. Secondly, against the backdrop of increased income inequality in the West, we've seen greater support for populist policies and also for protectionism. We've seen that in the form of packages, for example, out of the United States recently. And thirdly, with greater geopolitical tension, security risks also play a part in wanting to reduce the risk in a company's supply chains. Retail, hospitality and leisure companies will be able to claim new one-off grants worth up to $12,000. President Biden promises additional $1,400 payments as part of his $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. The actions I'm announcing today will provide to the vast majority of households £350. Over the last few years, the public has received fiscal support greater than anything they've received before. This has raised expectations of more fiscal activism in the future. Faced with the pandemic and the consequences of the Ukraine war, governments stepped in to support individuals and set a new standard of fiscal intervention, which is going to be hard to row back from. In fact, we expect fiscal activism to continue. And this will pose a challenge for bond investors who will be concerned about the sustainability of spending. This shift in global relationships, public expectations and spiralling costs set a sombre backdrop. But history tells us that adversity brings innovation and often opportunity for investors. With issues like climate change and labour shortages still on the table in boardrooms, technology is still one to watch. Schroeder's Chief Investment Officer, Johanna Kirkland, joins me now in the studio. So, Johanna, what does this mean for investors? Should they be worried? No, I mean, I think adapting to a new regime always creates uncertainty, but ultimately there's nothing to be worried about. What it means in practice is we're likely to see more of a rate cycle. You know, if you think about the last decade, we had rates pinned at zero for many years. Now we're going to see more of a rate cycle from central banks. And that will benefit strategies which have the ability to adapt to that rate cycle. I think also the return of positive cash rates effectively means that the bird in the hand is worth something. The valuation now matters. And that's something, again, that we need to take into account when building portfolios. We need to recalibrate the kinds of valuations we need to see in order to be enticed into asset classes. Great. So what does this mean for asset allocation? Well, let's start with bonds. We used to own bonds as a source of diversification in the portfolio. After the financial crisis, the primary problem was deflation. And against that backdrop, bonds tend to do well when equities are struggling. Now they're more positively correlated with equities because we're in a more inflationary environment. So we need higher yields to entice us to own bonds. But they do have a role in the portfolio as a source of income. 
Commodities are interesting because, again, in the last decade, typically, they weren't a very useful allocation in the portfolio. In a more inflationary environment with greater geopolitical tension, commodities, again, are quite an important source of diversification. And then finally, when it comes to equities, you know, I mentioned earlier that with positive cash rates, valuations start to matter. So we're moving very much from what we call the FOMO market, the fear of missing out, to an environment where actually you need to do your homework. Um, that actually benefits investors who are focused on fundamentals. So again, more work to do, but actually more rewards for investors who are willing to do that analysis. And then in that report, we talked a little bit about the opportunities in technology. And I'm sure investors would like to hear your thoughts on this. Yes, I mean, I think through the pandemic, we got used to talk of the fangs. That's, you know, the sort of big internet uh, technology stocks that everyone knows. We're really talking about um, more niche opportunities in technology now. But ultimately, we're in a highly disrupted environment. So, for example, if you're dealing with wage pressure, one answer, one response to that is automation. So that's a source of technological disruption. We're also talking about climate change, which is going to require more technologies as we transition away from fossil fuels. And again, that's an opportunity for a thematic approach to equity investment. So again, a disrupted environment uh, means new trends, new ideas, new opportunities, and ultimately a benefit, to, I think, to a, to a more thematic approach. Perfect. Thank you very much. So it seems that inflation is still high on the agenda, but as long as you do your homework, there are still some opportunities to be had. Thanks for watching.